everybody, Vesper HBT here. This is the VestGen project, only found on the teepforumco.com. Search VestGen is coming. Come join the cooperative work on our quest for overunity and free energy for all. I'm going to show you the VestGen here, just kind of splitting it in half, showing you all the cutaway parts. Here's the rotor leaving us, followed by the pulley on top. What we're showing is just how the whole assembly goes together from an interior out point of view. And cut away the base here. You can see the bearings and how they support the shaft. A little bit closer view of that here. We're going to just kind of deconstruct this a little bit, show you some other parts on the interior. Right now we're going to take away the outer sleeve off the bearing to, to expose the ball bearings on the inside. These are deep channel, deep groove ball bearings that we're going to be using here. They are made out of a composite material and they do have stainless steel interior and exterior. That'll help so that we don't have any magnetism there or very little from the stainless steel. We'll cut away this interior sleeve that exposes the bushing. That's what actually supports our shaft. That gives us a little bit of anti-vibration in between the shaft and the bearings itself. The center blue part there, that's of course what centers the rotor and uh, contains that. Again, a little bit of anti-vibration ability there. How this actually works is this shaft goes into the threaded part here shown. And that actually supports the two lateral bearings on the base. It is pinned through so that the interior part of that will rotate with the shaft, as opposed to the rotor which rotates on top the shaft. All right, let's check out the real thing now. So what we have here is the rotor in rotation here. I just spun it up by hand. As you can see, it spins quite nicely. I've got a little bit of balancing left to do. Just thought I'd show you that. Here's the uh, rest of the magnetic holders here. You can see that they're two different colors. Well, I had a thought on that. I thought that, uh, well, since we did the 12 magnet rotor, I thought that maybe we could do kind of the same thing here. So let's combine two different colors to show which pull direction our magnet is. That way we don't have to figure it out later. So on these right here, you can see I've shown these before. We don't need to go into too much detail with that. I'm going to stop the rotor here. I'm going to just lift it off so that you can see the bottom here. And it just lifts off. It's not bolted in place. Everything's just static sat there right now. This is the base. You can see it looks just like the animation. You can see the inside is actually hollow. This means that it's a lightweight part and uh, there's not any room to, to put anything inside of it. I'll show that later. That way you can't say that there's contained uh, batteries or any type of other circuitry inside there. Now the shaft is what I want to talk about here. It is a little bit small for what I want. It would support it, but when we start getting into the upper speeds, I do want to change that out. So what I'm going to do is change to a nylon bolt. Well, I wanted to. But they don't make nylon bolts stock in the length that I need it to be to go through the base and the rotor. So, next best thing, titanium. That's right. So I got a titanium shaft and I spun up some threads on it. And so now it's the same size as a standard half inch bolt. You can see the size difference here. Not talking about the length, just the actual thickness or width of the bolt. So you can see there's a lot more material on the titanium. Also, titanium's not magnetic, so that'll actually be better for us than a nylon bolt. I do have to remake this collar on the inside here. That was just a washer there, sorry about that. But we have a little bit of work left to do before we can spin it up. This is the interior collar section that I have to redo so that it will fit that half inch shaft now. Get all that done, and then I'll get it reassembled and kind of show you how all that's gonna go together. You can see the size difference between the the bushings here. This right here is the top piece that will actually bind onto the rotor when we actually put the AC section on. I'm just going to balance it up here if I can. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we'll take this bearing out and then we'll replace it with this section here. 
and then we'll put pressure on it and that will actually join the pulley or the AC pulley to the rotor. So you can kind of see how that goes together now. A little bit easier. Just have to take all this interior part out. And that's pretty much the uh, entire rotor, but I want to show you this next part. Ah, the coil mounting. So this is the drive coil holder. Looks pretty good. I've just got the top part of it made here. You can see the, uh, the gen coil where it's going to sit behind the actual drive coil. These two pieces up here, those are for clamps. We put a couple of bolts through there, clamp it down, holds that uh, coil in there good and tight. This lower section here, which I'll show you here, that kind of weird little section, that's what actually enables the coil to actually go forwards and backwards in the uh, base slot. So a little bit like what CW is doing on his, just a little bit different take on that. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll be giving you some more updates here as they come along. And uh, that's everything from the best gen for now.